Hello students, in this module we are going to discuss about the different materials used in furniture construction. As you all know, furniture are the movable objects like chairs, stools, sofas, beds, cupboards and shelves etc. used to support our activities such as seating, dining, relaxing, sleeping and to store the things. Apart from the comfort and convenience in using them, the people also need the furniture to suit the interiors and exteriors of their houses. To satisfy such needs, newer materials which are versatile and more comfortable are in the market. Each material has its own characteristics and give different effects. For example, wood is used for warmth and elegance, wrought iron is for sturdy, simplicity and so on. Now let us discuss about the qualities of various furniture material that is used either for structural or for aesthetic purpose. Now we will see the objective of this lesson. To know the materials used in furniture construction. Next to understand the steps involved in making wooden furniture. Third objective is to know the different types of joints used in furniture construction. Next we will see on the range of materials used in furniture construction. The furniture materials include wood, plywood, MDF that is medium density fiber, chipboard, wicker which includes cane, rotten, willow and bamboo, stone, metal, plastic, glass, acrylic, polyurethane, leather, synthetic leather and fabrics. Now let us discuss with the general characteristics of these furniture materials. Wood which has always been and still is the fundamental and universal material used for making furniture. People like wooden furniture for its beauty, individuality and durability. The people are attracted towards wooden furniture again and again because of its natural look. Yes, wood has a beautiful grain pattern and lines. The natural color and grains of wood have a beauty and individuality of its own. You will never find two identical wooden pieces. Wood is pleasant to touch and attractive in appearance. The beauty of the grain and visual texture can be enhanced by polishing. It can be stained and also can be bleached. Wood can be carved with designs and inlaid with different materials and patterns that cannot imagine on any other material. Another important quality of the wooden furniture is that they can easily blend with the other furnishings in the house because of their natural look and also maintain their original charm. The second important characteristic of the wood is it is strong and resilient. It is naturally strong. It has remarkable strength in relation to its size and shape. That is, even slender legs of chair or table can withstand much strain or lots of weight. Then it has a high degree of tensile strength also. It resists breakage even when it is subjected to a lot of pulling and bending. Wood has a great compressive strength too and therefore it has been used for making legs of very heavy furniture. The third important quality of the furniture is wooden furniture is easy to keep. The wooden furniture is durable and lasts for longer. Some families have been keeping their antique furniture for lifetimes. Another important characteristic is it is easy to clean. Furni wooden furniture is that it is very easy to clean because it remains shiny and retains its unique glow by regular swabbing and early polishing. Wood is economical. Wooden furniture is comparatively inexpensive in original cost and in labor cost involved in shaping and joining it. It is economical to maintain over a long period of time. Wood is an eco-friendly material. It is not damaging the environment like plastic. It is an organic material and biodegradable. So you need not worry about any environmental problem from it. Then wood is flexible also. We can modify the furniture according to our need and at any time we want it. It will just fit the space and look great all the time. 
there are also a lot of reasons for people to like solid wood furniture at the same time wooden furniture has few limitations also what are the limitations it burns rots decays and attacked by insects it can swell shrink or warp with changes in its moisture content it requires some knowledge and experience about woods to identify high quality and well seasoned wood then solid wood furniture also require more care and maintenance it needs to be polished once in a year to maintain its charm then what is solid wood furniture solid wood furniture means all exposed parts are made of the same natural wood that is no other materials are included such as plywood or particle wood wood is used for making furniture or classified as hardwood and softwood the division has been made by long usage and it is not in accordance with the relative hardness of wood but is concerned with the specific species of the trees let us see the difference between hardwood and softwood hardwood trees cast their broad leaves in the autumn season these are darker and heavier these include the teak oak walnut cherry maple mahogany etc softwood trees have a needle like leaves which they retain during the winter the softwoods are group which is confined to coniferous which are evergreen trees softwoods are light in weight and in color popular varieties of softwoods are pine fir spruce cedar birch redwood and sal next i am going to explain the qualities of layered and artificial wood these woods are made by gluing together one or more layers or more sheets of wood we need is the thin sheet or slice of wood used to make plywood another important artificial layered wood is plywood which is made by gluing numerous thin sheets of wood or veneers together with grains of adjacent sheets at right angle to each other it makes the plywood strong and quite pliable it will be more pliable if the sheets is very thinner now we'll see the characteristics of plywood plywood is more economical serviceable larger in size it is flexible it is more beautiful hence it is more popularly used in modern furniture than the solid wood plywood has some disadvantages also they are it is made up of more material and it is heavier which increases the cost of the plywood since plywood is made from veneer and glue it is more easily get damaged by water it is porous in nature which absorb water in if it ever gets wet it will warp and peel off the plywood will decay faster than compared to the solid wood plywood is not sandable or carved like hardwood because it is made up of thin sheets of wood and glue so you can only paint it next layered wood is medium density fiber which is also called as mdf it is an artificial wood made by compressing powdered wood with glue to form sheets usually 2400 mm into 1200 mm in size the qualities of the mdf are it is quite soft fairly pliable and very easy to work with it cuts sand and finishes very easily it is used widely for interior projects especially for making cupboards and shelves both mdf and hdf are available in any design and finish and are sure to enhance the beauty of any interiors the next artificial wood is chipboard it is the same like mdf but it is made from actual wood chips hence it got the name it is widely used for the structural casing of kitchen furniture and cabinets which are then covered with a laminate or wood veneer it is only useful in street form not any other form next we will see the properties and qualities of cane and wicker furniture 
can has been used to make furniture since a very long time. It is light in weight, eco-friendly, less costly than wood and it is sturdy. Because of its natural color, it easily blends with any color scheme. It needs little maintenance such as regular dusting and cleaning as there is possibility of dust and insects settling in the woven surface of the cane. Next we will see about wicker furniture. Wicker is not at all a material but a technique that is used to weave a combination of natural materials like cane, straw, bamboo, reed, willow and rotten into any shapes of table, chairs and sofas. The next wicker material we are going to see is rotten. It is a very good material mainly because it is lightweight, durable, suitable for outdoor use and to a certain extent it is flexible. It accepts both paints and stains like any other kinds of wood. So it is available in wide range of colors. Moreover, the inner core of the rotten can be separated and worked into wicker. The next wicker material we are going to see is willow. It is very attractive, comfortable and artistic in appearance. And much of it is durable and inexpensive also. It can be used as a long time in the natural color and then it should be stained or enameled to preserve it for a longer time. Besides the combination of natural materials, synthetic materials are also combined together with these natural materials to create a wicker furniture that are suitable for outdoor use. One such material is synthetic rotten. It is durable, easy to care and maintain, flexible, light in color and it is cost worthy. The next material we are going to see is stone. Stone has been used as a furniture material since historic period. This eco-friendly stone furniture will enhance the surroundings. Stone furniture is very good choice for both indoor and outdoor furnishings because of its durability, low maintenance, everlasting beauty, it is comfortable, it is virtually indestructible, it repels water, it resists stains and also fading. There is no need to refinish it every year. The other material we are going to discuss about next is metal. Metal furniture is a type of furniture that uses metal parts in its construction. It has gained entry into the modern homes, offices, waiting rooms, porches and gardens. The advantages of the metal furniture are they are strong, highly durable, fireproof, light in weight, requires low maintenance and heat resistant. They can give a beautiful look also to the interiors. It can withstand weather conditions and is therefore suitable for indoor and outdoor use. Okay. This metal furniture can be mass produced so it has, a great, has greatly lowered its price. They are available in various sizes and shapes and are more comfortable. Let us now proceed to the disadvantages of the metal furniture. As metal is a good conductor, it can easily get too cold to touch during the silly weathers and too hot during summer. They are also vulnerable to oxidation so they can develop rust and corrosion over time. There are various types of metals that can be used in making furniture such as iron, wrought iron, steel, aluminium and stainless steel. Wrought iron furniture has proved its durability and appeal by its continuous use to this day. It has given us endless designs and we can choose from bedroom furniture to dining furniture. The next metal we are going to discuss is steel, especially Tubular steel furniture is popular trend after wrought iron. This steel furniture is tough and need less maintenance. It is good looking and elegant. It can be decorative at both indoor and outdoor. Aluminium furniture looks ethnic. 
it can add charm and comfort it is high in quality and low in cost it is highly resistant to rust and corrosion the other metal we are going to see is stainless steel it is used to make multi purpose furniture that can be folded and kept away after use they can be manufactured in any shape and last for a long time without any damage or corrosion next we'll talk about the plastic furniture plastic furniture is present in every household today it has dominated its presence in every industry what are the advantages of using plastic furniture plastic furniture is inexpensive when compared to wood or glass or metal it is light in weight you can move without any help to any convenient location without much strain generally it is unbreakable it does not break when it is handled roughly plastic furniture has low or no maintenance cost it does not require regular maintenance like wooden furniture plastic furniture is available in wide range of variety of colors and wherever it is used it can change the appearance and mood of the room it can be easily molded to any desired shape to get variety of designs usage of this plastic reduces cutting of trees and thereby prevent deforestation plastic furniture is waterproof even when left unattended in rain it does not get rusted or corroded these plastic furniture do not have any sharp corners or edges hence they are harmless when used especially it is suitable for children's room the molded plastic furniture can be easily stored and can be piled in the store room next we'll pass on to the disadvantage of plastic furniture plastic furniture lacks durability it has a tendency to break or fall apart very easily within a short span of time it is not sturdy and cannot withstand heavy weight and pressure it lacks elegance especially when compared to wood and glass plastic furniture lacks elegance making plastic furniture is not eco friendly because plastic is not a biodegradable material hence use of plastic has a lot of environmental hazards next we will proceed with glass furniture no one needs an introduction on glass furniture we can see this in almost all houses both indoors and outdoor in different forms why do people prefer glass furniture there are many reasons first it gives modern look to the decor particularly when combined with metal or wood glass is easy to maintain there is no danger of termite attacks as in wooden furniture the best part of it is transparent one then tempered glass is very strong and this increases the durability of the furniture and requires less maintenance glass has few limitations also they are expensive glass needs more care to avoid breakage cracks scratches and chipping of the glass moreover the removal of the fingerprints get difficult sometimes the next material used in furniture construction is acrylic these materials looks very much like glass and have a flexible design they have only half the thickness of glass but are 17 times stronger than glass these can be manufactured in any shape and design using thermo setting process the next material is polyurethane this is available in wide range of col colors majority of the sofa sets being imported to india are made out of polyurethane material the frame of this materials are made out of wood and then given a coating of polyurethane they also have an excellent finishing the next important material used in furniture construction we are going to discuss is leather even though they are a bit expensive leather furniture offer more comfort than any other furniture they offer a comfortable seating in any climate synthetic leather 
which is a clone of leather which is cheaper than leather but the same in quality. Synthetic leathers are normally used to cover the cushions placed over the wooden furniture. Another advantage of these is that they do not require much maintenance. Another important material used in furniture construction is fabric. Fabric furniture is a symbol of sophistication and luxury. While purchasing a fabric furniture and sofa sets, take special care to buy the one whose upholstery should be durable, wrinkle proof, not easily stained and can be removed that is very essential for easy maintenance. Closely woven fabric is good choice for the upholstered furniture. Jute, cotton, velvet, polyester and linen are of the highest demand in the market. Next, I am going to elaborate on the steps involved in furniture construction. What are the steps involved in furniture construction? We will see. The style and quality of any particular furniture will determine how many steps are necessary from its protection to till its end. Naturally, the more labor involved, the higher the cost and it gets reflected in the retail price. A furniture construction is a complicated process. It is necessary to discuss about some of the steps because they influence the quality and cost of the furniture. The steps involved in furniture construction include shaping, carving, turning, fluting, reading and joining. F the first step is shaping. For whole pieces that will be made of solid wood or for some parts of such as pedestals and legs, the timber is cut to the desired size and shapes by saws. A plane then may be used to shape the edges. If there is no decorative edges are required, the next step may be sanding. Much of this can be done by machine, but some of the areas of wooden pieces still need hand finishing. The next important step is carving. This is a type of decorative cutting done on wood. It can be done by machine or by hand. Machine carving is used on mass produced inexpensive furniture only. For better quality furniture, initial work may be done by machine but hand labor is used for finishing. Hand carving is done only on expensive furniture because this process is slow, laborious and time consuming. It must be done by only a skilled craftsman. The next step is turning. It is a form of decorating wood and is used to create wooden objects on a lathe. Wood turning differs from most other forms of woodworking in that the wood is moving while a stationary stool is used to cut and shape it. Leg, base, etc. may be shaped by a turning lathe which cut symmetrical indentations to form a design. The effect of a twisted rope is achieved when the block of wood is moved slowly along the cutting machine. The next step is fluting. It is a technique in which lengthwise grooves may be cut into posts and legs. It is linear concave that means inward curving channels. These fluted sections are separated by narrow up curved channels. Next step is reading. Reading is the decorative process of applying parallel rows of beaded mountings that projects from the surface. It is the opposite of fluting and is used on legs. The next important steps in furniture construction is joining. It is an art of cutting, preparing and jointing the individual pieces of furniture. So, it has to form the framework of the desired shape, size and finish. There are various types of joints used in furniture construction such as bud, mitre, dovetailed, mortise and tenon, tongue and groove, dado, dowel and lap joint. Now, I will going to explain the types of joints and their uses in furniture making. 
first we will see about bud joint. It is a simple joining made by gluing or nailing the two ends together. It will not withstand much strain and furniture made of such joint is strengthened by the use of nailed or screwed angle iron. Next important joint used to make furniture is mitre. As you can observe in the figure that is in the PowerPoint, square corners of a mitre. Each angle is cut on 45 degree angle and the two are held together with glue or nails. Next is dovetailed joint. In this method of joint, series of wedge shaped pieces are cut out of each member that is in wood piece and the joint is formed by hooking the projection of one member into the other one. This joint is specially used in cabinet work. The most important joint is mortise and tenon. It is the strongest and fundamental joint. It efficiently holds the pieces together and is simple in construction. This joint is formed by cutting one of the members so as to form a projection termed as tongue or tenon which fits into a slot known as mortise out into the other member. The joint is strengthened by inserting the wooden wedges from back or by inserting a dowel pin from the face. The next joint is tongue and groove. This type of joint is similar to mortise and tenon joint except that the tongue and groove extend the width of the boards. Therefore, a lengthwise projection on one edge fits into a matching groove on the other edge. It is generally used on dryers and contributed to free movement when put into use. Dado joint is somewhat similar to mortise and tenon joint in technique. Mortise like slot is made on one piece of wood. The size of the slot is made exactly to the size of the other piece of wood which is going to be placed on the slot. Both the wood pieces can be held together strongly by means of nails or screws. Dowel joint. In this kind of furniture joint, a small peg of wood is used to join two edges. Usually, the dowels are shaped like a nail with a head and a sharp edge on the other side. The dowel wins are used for various types of joining on chairs, frames, for upholstered places and so on. Double dowel provides added stability and security. The next joint is lap in which two pieces have equal sized grooves so that they are flush when placed together. Thus, the various sections of a piece of furniture should be joined firmly and securely. Careful joining is very important to the construction. In high quality furniture, the joining are as nearly and perfectly matched as possible. From this module, okay, you can acquire some knowledge about the materials used in furniture construction, the steps involved in furniture construction and also the types of joints used in furniture making.